Yo, what is up guys? Hope you are having a great day today and welcome to the vlog. So for today's video is the story of two cyclists who is uh, fulfilling their dream ride to the mountains of Abayao. And in this video, I'm about to tell you that sometimes dreams can become nightmares too. And this is the epic ride. Like what I've said in the intro, this is our story riding our bikes at the mountains of Bapayao. So we called it the epic ride and this started when I was inspired by uh, Tyler of the Vegan Cyclist who is behind the Impossible Route series together with uh, Jeremiah Bishop. And so as a cyclist myself and a video creator also, I was challenged to create my own version of that Impossible Route and that was the birth of the epic ride. So the epic ride is basically our uh, cycling journey to any places here in Luzon that is hard to go by a bicycle and it should be long. So for this ride, our route here is a uh, loop and uh, it is around 321 kilometers and uh, for the total elevation, it is around 6,000 meters of climbing. And the ride starts here in Lawag, then we travel to the town of Solsona where the start of the climb is located. We will ride then to the road of uh, Solsona Apayao Road all the way up to Mount Kilang Pass, then Mount Kilang Pass all the way to uh, Kalanasan Apayao. And then after that, Kalanasan Apayao straight up ahead to the highway of Cagayan and then back to Lawag. And also in this ride, we had no idea on how the terrains are or how steep some of the sections will be. We all know uh, the climb to uh, Solsona Apayao Road because uh, we climbed it many times already. And uh, what we also know is someone did finish the full loop and that's it. And so a day before the ride, we just bought some couple of foods to bring, then uh, packed the bags. Then it was cave time and the story begins. So we started riding our bikes uh, around 2.30 in the morning and our first destination is the town of Solsona. That is uh, where we will find the start of the climb going up the mountains and I forgot to mention that we are using the mountain bikes for this ride. So from Lawag City it is a uh, 30 kilometers ride till uh, we get to the town of uh, Solsona and then uh, to the town proper it was like 5 kilometers till uh, we get to the foot of the climb. So as we start climbing, it wasn't hard at first. Uh, as I have uh, said already, we know uh, the climb to uh, Mount Kilang. We also had no problems of uh, drinking water because there are so many streams here. And uh, by the way, this is our first time climbing this early in the morning. We also bring our food because there, are, there were no houses or uh, stores to the climb. And uh, it's just mountain pass, no electricity, no nothing, just road. And so before reaching the first steep section of the climb, we then first eat. Uh, we wanted to like not stop pedaling till we get to the summit of Mount Kilang. So then uh, the steep section begins. It was hard. It uh, rises up like 17 to 22 percent gradient, and it was long, very very long. Uh, there were like five to six steep long sections of the climb, and uh, we were just grinding all the way. Sometimes uh, we were swimming the road just to move forward. Um, uh, I wanted to rest but Dennis just keeps on going so I wanted like uh, not to be beaten up by him so I guess uh, I just keep on pedaling too. And as the climb progresses, the view keeps on getting beautiful. It was so amazing. The scenery was just awesome. Um, uh, that's why I love it here. And uh, the view keeps on getting more gorgeous until uh, we get to the summit of the climb. And to spice things up, there is this signage near the last 3 kilometers of the climb. Me and Dennis race up there and uh, I think it was unnecessary but it was fun. And uh, I did win though. 
Uh, after getting the signage of uh, Buto Apayao, that marks the final ascent till we reach the summit of Mount Kilang. Uh, the final ascent was really long too and uh, it has this final steep part till you get to the top. And at the summit there you will find the monument of the blazing mountains of the gods uh, here in uh, Mount Kilang Pass. This is the farthest part that we got into this road. We have no knowledge of the roads onwards and I am hoping that it would be forgiving after all the climbs that we did. And so as we go forward, we saw this beautiful mountain sights and uh, this was the first time that we saw this uh, view by the way. Uh, we were filled with joy that time and I was so getting excited to what uh, we will discover next. And uh, that was the purpose of this ride because this was the dream ride and I am looking forward for more discoveries that uh, we might see along the road. So moving on here at uh, Mount Kilang Pass, the road starts descending. Uh, it was a steep descent, so steep that the brakes on our bikes doesn't stop us anymore because it was uh, getting so hot due to the braking and uh, we can't manage our speed either because it was so fast and the roads were so curvy and uh, basically we don't want to die yet. So uh, after reaching the bottom of the descent, uh, we then uh, cross our first river crossing uh, they say there were like three river crossings um, till we get to the uh, Kalinasan Apayao town proper Then after crossing the river, there's this climb again. It is a, a bit loose and uh, steep. That's why uh, we push the bike. So at this moment, I wasn't sure what to expect uh, of the roads up ahead. I thought that once we descend from uh, Mount Kilang, it will be like flatter roads all the way to Kalinasan. But nope, it was not. After a climb, we descend, then we climb again, and it's getting steeper and steeper. We got like 73 kilometers at 10 a.m. and uh, it's getting hot. The problem is we don't have any idea of the roads up ahead going to Kalanasan. And the other problem was we have no uh, cellular signal that time so we can't use Google Maps to see the distance till we get to Kalanasan town proper. And at one time we stumbled upon a local resident telling us that the roads to Kalanasan Apaya was climb. And as we go downhill, we saw the uh, road sign on the side of the road and it is the signage that tells us the direction towards Cleberia and Kabugao. So that means according to the sign, we are going left if we uh, reach the junction. So in our minds, maybe we can still make it to Kalanasan after lunch and then uh, reassess our situations there. Uh, because this time we are a bit far away from our time frame. Um, like I've said, we had zero idea of the roads till we uh, get to Kalanasan. It is our first time riding these roads as we progress. Uh, we had no uh, backups as we ride. Uh, we were like two cyclists that is hungry for adventure and uh, at this point I am feeling like it is a bit foolish of me um, not to really plan uh, the ride very well. And uh, in my mind, if uh, the ride goes sideways, you just take the bus. Um, I didn't consider it that it was all mountains in this area. So we go on. Uh, the road to Kalanasan was a climb again. And uh, that time it was okay. We can take that. Uh, we are just focused on getting to Kalanasan anyway. Uh, that was the main target now. As uh, one of the locals tells us that there are vehicles that are traveling from Kalanasan to Cagayan. And that pumps our spirit. But... Uh, this is where it goes sideways uh, very much uh, this is where uh, the bigger problem comes so a few days pass it was uh, raining uh, very hard in this area so uh, there was uh, this landslide up ahead and the road to, uh, to Kalanasan Apaya was destroyed that was the only road that gets us to Kalanasan and it was gone and uh, it was really bad but we can carry our bikes to the other side of the road but uh, it was too uh, risky uh, the local government didn't let us through though uh, they said that it is uh, still dangerous we can uh, we can fall uh, or in case another landslide happened we might get buried 
And another bad news was it will take some time to fix the road. So he suggested that we go back to Mount Kilang Pass if we wanted to go back home to Ilocos Norte and Luwag. And so for me, like, what? Uh, that's impossible. Uh, there were so many steep climbs going back to Mount Kilang. And uh, if we do that, then we have failed the ride. We are still hoping and making the loop that time. And uh, I, can't, I can't go back basically and so we then uh, talked the plan on how to get past Kalanasan but still make the loop uh, the guy in charge of the digging uh, said you can buy past Kalanasan but still go to Cagayan by taking the Pudtul road uh, he said that it is like the same to Kalanasan but that way to Pudtul was just longer and so yeah uh, like I was thinking maybe it's still doable uh, we can still make it to Cagayan so I discussed it to Dennis then Dennis agreed and then we take the other road uh, to Puntol by going to the other side remember the signage going to Kabugao uh, that was the way to Puntol and by doing that the nightmare begins going to Kabuga was uh, freaking brutal so many punchy and steep climbs and uh, it was like 4 in the afternoon and we are still at uh, 133 kilometers of the ride from the signage it was like 30 to 40 kilometers of non-stop climbing we were so fed up with climbs that time I wish I uh, wouldn't see any more uh, mountains and for me like I was done I don't have any strength left in me um, and that being said as we arrive at the uh, Kabugao town proper we have a uh, little bit of signal and uh, guess what how many kilometers till we hit the highway uh, in Puttol it was like freaking 90 plus more kilometers and the majority of the road was climb we still pedaled like to the start of Puttol climb um, I am picking myself up Dennis was just fine he was encouraging me and it was like 5 p.m. when we start uh, the climb and as we start in my exhaustion I stopped and that was it I am done I was destroyed I am messed up I got no more hopes I just stay on the side of the road stop pedaling stop whatever I am doing on the other hand Dennis was strong his mind was strong and he gives me all this encouragement that he can give Dennis wanted to pull over some cars but there were no cars passing by but then a miracle happened, uh, there is this one pickup truck Dennis tried to fall over. At first he just passes by but then he turns back. The owner of the truck was Sir Thomas, he asked us where we are uh, going. We said that we aim the highway of Cagayan so that we can take the bus but uh, I said the farthest you can drop us is okay. Then he said just, I'm getting you to the town, drop you off the bus station he said. He tells us that his son is from Baguio and uh, he was a cyclist too and that made him uh, to help us. And so we hop on the truck then uh, just watch the steep road to Puttol as we pass by. Then uh, Sir Thomas dropped us at the bus station and that's it. That's the end of the adventure. It was a disappointing one and uh, scary as well because uh, it was the first time that it happened to us and the moral of the story is this if it is the first time that you'll travel the ride and uh, you know it is uh, a bit difficult and hard uh, plan it carefully just don't take your excitement decide on what you are be doing i am still uh, hoping to do this uh, ride one more time and uh, i wish to finish the loop so uh, we will see someday and uh, if that time comes uh, I'll be posting it here so be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, hope you like the video as well and I'll see you on the next one.